Dykes is live in the hallway for us. And Todd, I know you've been there every day. Jacob. You know these family members. You've talked with them day in and day out. Talk with us about what's going on right now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me first bring everybody up to speed, and I am with Defense Attorney Jay Clark. I'll be chatting with him momentarily. So, a really interesting turn of events, as you've noted. A mistrial declared for a second time. Uh, Ray Tenzing's second murder trial ends in a mistrial. Uh, in court, about... Um, 204, that's when Judge Giz, Leslie Giz, uh, instructed the bailiff uh, to go get the jury. Uh, it was 207 that they walked in, they were in their seats, and she was on the record, the judge was, um, and she said, You've all heard, and you just watched that live here on Channel 5, that it, the jurors indicated they were about evenly split. They were, I think the words were almost evenly split in, on the charges against Ray Tenzing. They had done extensive deliberation, and at that point, uh, Defense Attorney Stu Matthews standing up, uh, making a motion to declare a mistrial, and Judge Giz, there was no uh, obviously no objection from Seth Teeger, the prosecutor, and at that point, the judge did declare a mistrial, setting July 24th as the report uh, back day to see if the county prosecutor, Joe Dieters, wants to try this case again. As I was leaving the courtroom, the DeBose family was walking away, and you know, obviously, in I think a state of disbelief from their vantage point. I did ask. I talked to Tarina Allen briefly. We know they're here on the fourth floor behind me in a room, gathered, trying to collect their thoughts. Tarina did say she's shocked. She finds it horrible that someone can shoot and kill someone, and then she, to paraphrase, saying the court can find prove he's a liar, and he gets to walk free. So again, Ray Tenzing walking out of that courtroom today. They, uh, Mr. Tenzing and his attorney. Stu Matthews and his family, they left at the back of the courtroom, so we didn't have a chance. I did read, I asked Mr. Matthews as he was heading into court, uh, I, Mr. Matthews, will you talk to us afterwards? And he just kind of shook his head as if he didn't know, but at this point we haven't heard from the defense yet. But I am now joined by Jay Clark, obviously came over in the rain, and we appreciate that, understanding the seriousness of this. I, don't, I think it's fair to say, Jay, this is not a shock to a lot of people, but that when the moment happens, it's always, it's the moment. It, that, and there's no other way to describe it when it happens. It's the moment. And whatever side you're on, it's, it's, it's a hollow kind of feeling almost. You want a result, but depending upon the side you're on, this is some sort of result, but you don't like it either way. Well, and I will say the first trial, I observed uh, Ray Tenzing's mother wiping away tears when they had declared a mistrial, and I, almost, I believe I recall her mouthing the words yes, as if shaking her head a little bit. I mean, it was, you could clearly tell the weight was sort of off at that point. Now, that was not really the case this time. I was right behind the Tenzing family. His dad stood by Ray's side until they were on the record, at one point clenching his fist. I mean, just really, you could tell uh, from my vantage point from the Tenzing's perspective, they knew clearly, you know, his, their son could be sent to life in prison if it went a right. certain way. But I didn't notice the tears. So, so it seemed to me that they sort of thought this might be the outcome, and yet we don't know what the future holds. I, I think it's fair. We don't know what the future holds. But I think if the history teaches us anything, the first jury couldn't reach a decision. So it's not surprising this jury couldn't. I don't know what the split was the first time, but an even split this time approximately suggests both sides had merit to their case, and it, it truly depends on your life experience and point of view and how you evaluate the evidence. Well, and you've made the point uh, in, in numerous conversations on our air about the, just just some of the legal legalese here, but in the Allen charge and the language, I mean, there's a, effectively a line that says, you know, there are no other people better suited than you right. to, to make this decision, but you would argue, I mean, you could argue, well, there were 12 other people that were, that tried. In, in this particular case, that's true because we have a prior jury who couldn't make a decision. So I think it's, it is the standard language, but I, I think it rings kind of hollow when they say you're in a better position, no better position than anybody else. So it, it, I think that doesn't help the jury on these facts. And I have to assume the jurors in that room knew that to, to a point. Absolutely, they know it. All right, Jay Clark, stand by for us for a moment. Yes, I'm going to send it back uh, to the studio now. Mike and Cherie, we're, we're going to leave this floor and continue to gather information. We'll send it back to you for now. Uh, Todd Dykes at the courthouse, WWT News 5. All right.